guys, we're coming up to a time in the Bada Boom channel that is a little bit darker than what we've been experiencing. See, so far I've only showed you guys stuff that makes you feel good and be wise. The world does not only feel good though, and my channel is kind of meant to reflect the truth of what's in the world. You know, because wisdom kills evil. So we're going to start stepping down a darker path. I want all of you who are willing to come with me down this path to stay close and hold on tight because it gets dark and I don't want to lose anyone. Now, I'm going to do my best to make it easy on you, but we're going to be facing things like trigger warnings, dark spirits, and war mentalities. Some of it might be unsettling. I can't cover it up though because the whole point is exposing things. Come on, Abu. Who wants to talk about domestic violence? I'm game. Okay, that's ugly. Like, we're gonna need some kind of recovery period after this video because that is definitely a dark, dark alley. Yeah, for those of you who want to truly gain wisdom and understand this concept, go to deviantart.com and search domestic violence poems. I find that poetry is one of the most effective ways of understanding stuff like this. Okay, why do I need to know about domestic violence? Um, because wisdom is gold and it increases your value. I mean, either way, you're incredibly valuable, whether you believe me or not. And you're curious because you want to be one of those people who's in the know. You know, like people respect you and value your opinion. Okay, what I want to know is why do people stay in abusive relationships? Like, why don't you just leave? I mean, that's what I do. Okay, one, every situation is different. You're not considering if there's kids involved. Two, you're assuming you'd have somewhere to go. And three, we haven't even touched on what that would mean for you financially and for your safety and for your job. Actually, I think that stuff can be kind of trivial in trying to figure out why they haven't left yet. You think that's trivial. In what world is money and children trivial in life decision making? Well, like, they're only trivial in comparison to the root issues. You know, like, those are things that you can physically see, which means that they're easier to deal with. The bigger issues are the ones that you can't see. Hmm, more demons? I thought that was only when you talk about drugs. Well, like addiction, getting out of an abusive relationship is full of mental knots. And, like addiction, the line is really blurry, so it's hard for people to know when they have a problem so that they can address it. What do you mean the line is really blurry? Well, how do you know when you're in an abusive relationship? Is it when the person you're with hits you? Like, is that where you draw the line? That's where most people draw the line. But what if it's just a shove? Or what if they just grab your face and they don't actually hurt you? Like me personally, I draw the line at yelling. Like if someone is that controlled by their emotions that they are going to raise their voice at me, then that is not a relationship that I want to be in. That is my exit sign. You just passed my exit, let's turn around and drop me off there. That's not where the abuse starts though. It starts with the dominant one telling the submissive one that they're doing something wrong. And then when they try to explain themselves, they get interrupted or ignored completely. It's a long, slow, grueling process, but eventually the submissive one is looking to the dominant one for approval for everything that they do. They were once normal and independent, and now they're afraid to think for themselves. There it is in a nutshell. Now what the interesting part is, is what the dominant one uses to trick the submissive one. From what I've observed, there's two main tactics that they use that are really effective. The first one is they just try to make it look like they're really naive and confused and like they don't actually realize what they're doing. You know, so this naivety kind of brings out the other one's parenting instincts. See, here's the thing, normally the submissive one is a good person at heart. People like this tend to think that everybody's a good person at heart. It's not because they're stupid, people on the other end of the spectrum think the exact same thing. Only they just assume everyone's evil at heart. And then of course there's all people in between. So they just can't seem to fathom that the dominant one knows exactly what they're doing. That their goal is to break and torment them because they can only see in others what they have in themselves. I know the second control tactic that they use to trick the submissive one. They act really sweet. Like they give you affection whenever you doubt that they're a good person. So that you're left thinking, how can this sweetheart be anything more than a harmless teddy bear? But then of course, they withhold that affection when you've done something wrong. That is the number one trait of the abuser. That is also where I draw the line. If someone is withholding affection from you, then call them out on it. Tell them that they're being abusive and they need to stop. I love you guys. Like if somebody is bleh, them that the dominant one's goal is actually yeah. See, here's the thing. Normally, the sub sub the one is a bleh. well, like addiction. Getting out of an abusive relationship is full of mental knots. That's friendship. The bigger issues. The bigger. The real issues. Bleh, what world is? Like, no matter what they do, there's something wrong. 